what's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV got an interesting email and I figured well this is one that people could probably get something out of so let's uh, you know let's do a video on this one um, so I'll read it to you it says I really like the videos and advice you give I'd just like to know my thoughts me and if a video if, if I could make a video about it regarding friendships that I have had in the past and friends that are just not clicking with me anymore can you give some advice regarding how to approach friends that leech your time and don't give anything back? Also, relate friends to life goals. Name with help. Now, here's the deal. When you're young, you know, when I say young, I'm talking about like late teens, early 20s. You're all about like my boys, my buddies, my friends, bros before hoes, party yeah, we're best friends for life and all this shit. And you figure... You know, like, dude, we're going to keep up rocking these fucking parties and bars forever. We're going to hang out. We're going to make fun of girls when they do stupid things and take too long to do their hair. And, you know, we're going to go surfing and whatever else we do. And then you realize very quickly that, you know, some of these friends may not really have much in common with you anymore once you start going about, you know, your actual adult life. And that's when things start to get to change a little bit. You know, I've had plenty of friends throughout the years who... You know, in certain time frames, everything really clicked and we were on the same page. But then all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but slowly you see it changing. And then you notice, you know what, we're not hanging out as much or we disagree more or, you know, he's got a girlfriend now, so he's not coming around as much or whatever the case may be. And the one main thing that I've learned above all else is you have very few actual friends that you'll ever have in your life that you can count on. You have a lot of acquaintances, a lot of people you hang out with, a lot of people you like, but in your whole life, you're probably going to have a handful of actual friends who will be there for you when you need them, who will help you pick you up when you're down, who you could not talk to for like two years, pick up the phone, call them, and it's like no time has passed. And, you know, as you start to realize that, the other things really don't matter. You realize that people phase in and out of your life for a reason. Now, you know, I'm fully, uh, I'm a big believer in that, that everything happens for a reason. Everybody you come in contact with, there is a reason for that. There's no coincidences in my life. That's just how I look at it. You know, um, there are people that I didn't necessarily get along with long term, but in short term, they helped me with something or I helped them with something and they didn't even know it. You know, and it takes you years to figure out, you know, down the line, you're like, oh, wow, I kind of learned this lesson from this person interesting because I've used that kind of like further on in my life even though we don't really talk anymore you know it it leaves its imprint on you the person leaves their imprint on you so what I would do I mean if you're not clicking with them anymore if it's more you know draining leeching on you you know you could either I mean if you, they really mean a lot to you you can try talking to them and say look what's the problem like this is the issue what's your deal this is how I'm feeling you know if they're not responsive to that then you got to take a step back and say what's best for me what, what do I need for me to be, you know, happy in this relationship that's going on? Like, if my boy over here, you know, I'm trying to study and I'm going to go through med school and, you know, he's not going to go to college and he's going to spend a lot of time partying for the next, like, six months until he, you know, gets this job he's waiting for or whatever, I can't be doing that. So you need to take a step back and say, look, this is the deal. I'm trying to go through med school, blah, blah, blah. If he's not responsible for that, you got to walk away. And, I mean, honestly... When I was going through the midst of my addiction and people saw me at my worst, okay, and they knew that they couldn't help, you know, I have two best, best friends since, excuse me, fix this fucking camera angle, two best, best friends since, since like teenagers, and Henry was the one, I guess I was 12 when I met Henry, so before teens, and then Christina, who I was later on, I was a teenager, 15, 16, or something like that when we met, and... There's two people that I can count on. If I called in the middle of the night and said I was in jail in Maryland, they would take care of me. They would bail me out. They would come down. Whatever would happen, they would, they would take care of me. I can call them after three years and it's like no time has passed. When I was essentially on my deathbed with pneumonia, when I woke up out of whatever fucking coma or stupor or whatever it was that I was in, Christina was the one sitting on the bed holding my hand, just sitting there rubbing my hand. And Henry was dressed in a suit, sitting in a chair in the ICU. Henry was at a club in New York when he got the call that I was sick and may die. And he hopped in the car in his suit and drove to Rhode Island and sat in the ICU. You know, those are the people that you can count on. And we don't see, you know, you're going to notice that as you get older, you don't hang out with everybody as much. 
You don't go out partying as much. You don't even stay in contact as much because life gets in the way. People go to school. People get married. People get jobs. People have kids. Shit happens and things get in the way. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys are not best friends anymore or not friends or you don't care or you're not there for each other. But you will also notice the ones that fall off that you're just like, eh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't bother me that I don't talk to them. I don't think about how they're doing. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't phase me. But if some of these people are drawing your energy out, sucking the energy out of you and not giving anything back, cut them off. You know, I had a, a friend that, it was a lot of work to be this person's friend. It was a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. And he always had so much negativity coming to him. You're always trying to help him out with something consistently. And when it came time for me to be helped, he would just tell you, to, you know what, tough it out, be tough, fuck it, whatever. And he would just blow it off. And then the final time, I said, enough. I cut ties and never talked to me. So I'm done. I don't really don't give a shit. I don't care if you're my best friend. You're not my best friend. I don't fucking care. The relationship that we have is wearing on me more than it is beneficial to both of us. So you're done. After making that decision, no more stress. No more issues. You know, no more wasting my time. I felt a lot better. It's hard to make that decision at first, but, you know... Once you do, you feel a lot better about it in the long run, and you realize it's the right thing to do. So my advice is, you know, talk to this person first, these friends, if you're, uh, you really want to save the relationships. If you don't want to do that, just cut them off, and if you talk to them and they're not receptive, cut them off. That's, that's what you got to do. Everybody grows, everybody continues to evolve, and it's possible you guys have just grown apart and evolved to the point where you're just not into the same things and stuff like that, but, you know, have, to have, talking to them wouldn't hurt. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosertraining.com is the blog and where to talk to your friend's bicep. We're out.